why do we need to celebrate her? Because she's a huge part of why our language is so broadcast internationally and we really appreciate her. Could you tell us what a typical Miss Lou Day looks like um, generally for the school? All right, typical Miss Lou Day, we have, our, we have our displays and our students, where even though their uniform is has the bandana, we encourage them to wear their bandana outfits if they have, if they so have. But ordinarily, if they want, if they just wish to wear their uniform, that's fine. And sometimes teachers will also adorn themselves in their in their bandana outfits. So could you tell me about the spirit of the children? Is it is that they are well received? They any activities that they have in place for them? Yes, they do. They are always enthused for these types of activities, especially when it comes to. Um, hearing the poems and the, the works of Miss Lou and getting the information, knowing all about our cultural icon. Yes, they are in use. Tell us a little bit more about this. So you mentioned poem readings. Yes. Anything else? Like ah, that? storytelling. Okay. Yes, and sometimes the students would be on the outside sitting on their towels and doing, they're listening to a story and stuff like that so and what we normally encourage the, the teachers to do is to have their miss Lou corner where the students will do their little poems her historical biography of her and stuff like that yes are the competitions held uh not on a wide scale not on a wide scale but you do have some students who will look will come as close as looking like Miss Lou, yeah. So they're dressed and so on. So we we tend to um, look for those students and highlight them. And we st we have students who know the poems verse by verse, word for word. And yes, we we really acknowledge them at that time. Do you find that um, students are more culturally aware as as in previous years, or is that a challenge that the, the school sees in the students? Itself? All right, well, for it to be a challenge, it would mean that we would not have been um, trying to inculcate or trying to teach our students. But as soon as they, they are enrolled here from grade one, so every grade, they have their, their Miss Lou's corner and we encourage them, we ask them questions. Who was Miss Lou? If they know Miss Lou and all of those things, we ask them about her history and so on. Mm -hmm. So, at least, you know, we wouldn't say that it is much of a challenge because they are in shoes. And uh, what, what our culture agent wanted for us to do, and then pandemic hit, was for us to continuously every year. So, each child should, by the time they're in grade six, they should know at least six this new poem because every year they would learn a new poem. Why is this school so, so central around Miss Lou? All right, our culture agent, Mrs. Grindley, she, she loves the language and the language of Jamaica is special, right? So, you know, she loves it and she, she does excellently with the students and they gravitate to that type of, you know, because oh, Miss Lou used to, oh, oh, Miss Lou's poems are, you know, that they are, they're like some gimmicks, you know, you have the rhyme and stuff. So the students, they really gravitate towards that. And that is why we try to continue to push, push the teaching of Miss Lou's um, history and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is our library miss lou corner so what we do usually when it's uh, her birthday or cultural day we usually remove the display from the library and display them on the outside where the children can interact with it more frequently and uh, have access to really go and read the literature so what is presented on the display basically is her Theatre Life, and she started Theatre, and also all the books that she would have been a part of 
in terms of her poems, mm -hmm. her story, and so on. And if you look closely up here, you will see that we would have uh, mounted some of her favorite words. Thank you, Miss Lou. And we coined that in our motto, out of many one language, right? So even though Miss Lou native language would be usually in the Creole, we mix it and let the children understand that it is still a part of our language but not the official English language. And so you would have children over a period of time, they would have done extended research on her life and her legacy and they would have mount those pieces carefully and also other international persons who would have been a part of her life story like Dr. Sue, we would have included her literature a part of the mix because Dr. Sue basically redone her legacy in terms of her stories and her poems and, and she pointed in her own book, Odi to Miss Lou. So it's really a dedication to Miss Lou. We have a, a model of Miss Lou right here, and that was a major project done by students and parents where they use papier mache and other treasurable items to put together a lovely model of Miss Lou. All of these items will be displayed tomorrow, tomorrow for her birthday and uh, we will be having persons to read the literature for students who are unable to read it and just to share a little of you know why Miss Lou is important to our school and why do we need to celebrate her because she's a huge part of why our language is so broadcast internationally and we really appreciate her thanks so much you would have been a part of this process how many years now Oh boy, I've been here for 26 years and uh, been a culture agent for about maybe 20 years. And since then, it's a yearly celebration. It's a yearly celebration. How has it been for you each year? Do you, do you step up from each year? Or? Um, we try, you see, our problem is sometimes, it's like as we get back to school, I mean two days after it's Miss Lou's Day. So we have recognized that what we will have to do is to start the preparation long before we leave school so when we get back everything would really be in place so i think that is where we have a little weakness mm -hmm. where the preparation you know we need to start it long before so they get back you know we just get into the whole mode of celebration mm -hmm. so that's a weakness that i have recognized okay. mm -hmm. well, could you stay state um any memorable experiences you have had over the years one that i remember of the bat is the transition from all eight school mm -hmm. into Miss Lou's school. The pride that we felt knowing that we are now Louise Bench Coburn. All right, so in 2008, I think we did a transition. So we were going to an all age before, and then we became Miss Lou's. Um, what makes you so passionate to continue in here? <laughs> I think, um, when it comes on to rhythm and music and poetry and, you know, just the joy of, you know, I'm a lively person and I like lively things with beat and rhythm and so on and um, just the joy of listening to the children sometimes, you know, saying a poem that you'd have taught them, you know, you take them to perform and they do so well and persons applaud them, you know. It's, it's like a proud parent. Yes, moment. it motivates you to... But it's something that I think it's inborn for me. I also love culture, you know, music, dance, drama, anything having to do with that. That's just me. I was born to. I was born for this. 